Here we are at the graveside of Thomas Gillerman of the 61st Ohio, uh, an Irish immigrant, uh, as you're about to expound mm -hmm. upon in more detail. But I definitely wanted to share this statistic about the Union Army. 53% uh, of the Union Army, this is the entire Union Army, not just the one that fights here at Gettysburg, but 53% of people that serve in all Union Armies are either African American immigrants or the children uh, of immigrants. Um, and Thomas Gillerman is one of those mm -hmm. people. And I, I just, I love that statistic because it totally reframes um, sort of how you think about Civil War armies. Um, tell us more about his story about how he came here to Gettysburg. Well, Thomas Gillerman is not, uh, there's an awful lot about his story that we simply cannot reconstruct. Mm -hmm. But what we can reconstruct is that, first of all, he's an older man, he's over 40, and has brought him to, uh, has encouraged him to enlist. He was an early enlistee. He enlisted in uh, 1861, and he is, uh, apparently was one of those soldiers who could always be counted upon to, to do what he could, but there were limitations on what he could do. Right. There were times when they would put him on detached service uh, so that he didn't have to march in line of, uh, it, it, he didn't have to march in line of battle, or they would find detached service to find something that he could do. Definitely. Um, Thomas Gillerin and his wife, have his wife's name is Honora. Uh, they were married back in Ireland long before they came here. And at the time of this battle, they are celebrating their 23rd wedding anniversary. Oh, wow. This is a couple that has grown old together. Mm -hmm. And we wish we knew why he decided this was important to him, that mm -hmm. he enlist. Right. But he is certainly here. Um, one of the things we often forget when we are in the cemetery is that in at the time of the battle, this was battleground. Right, exactly. And that scattered around through the battle, through the cemetery, there are cannons, not as decoration, but because those batteries were here at the time of the fight. Right. And scattered around the, the uh, periphery are small monuments that designate flank markers for regiments that who's held position up here on the hill. Mm -hmm. Well, the 61st uh, Ohio is one of those units that was positioned here on the hill, oh. and in fact, here in the, on the ground that oh, becomes wow. the cemetery. The markers are just down in this direction a little bit more. So Thomas Gillerin's fate is tied up with the land that we are standing on right now. Right. Um, as was typical of uh, his duties, it would seem, I'm, I'm going to read a little bit because it was a, a letter that his captain wrote mm -hmm. about what happened to him here. Um, not every soldier who falls at Gettysburg falls in uh, the execution of a glorious charge right. or standing in a stout defense. Sometimes the arbitrariness of death mm -hmm. on the battlefield is the thing that just seems so stunning. On the 3rd of July, Thomas Gillerin is on detached duty, and I'm going to read what his captain later wrote. Gillerin being detailed to help the cooks bring coffee to the men, was killed while carrying the kettles back to where they were cooking after mm -hmm. the men had finished their supper. The reason of his helping the cook at that time was on account of one of them being sick. This wow. wasn't standard duty for any soldier of the line. He was helping by doing something that he could do to take care of the, of the, of the men. We don't often think about what happens when you're up here fighting uh, for several days at some point you're going to have to eat and drink and things like that. How did the food get up here? Well, the Private Gillerin's story tells us. Right. They manhandled uh, buckets and pails of coffee and, and they brought food up from the behind the lines. Somehow they managed to cook it in some cases and bring it up here. And Gillerin is taking the, uh, the buckets back when he happens to get killed. A random shot, a random uh, round of artillery uh, pretty much ends his life. He's going to get hit uh, very badly, taken down to the George Spangler farm, and will pass away shortly thereafter because of the, um, the wound that he suffers here. Uh, his wife, Honora, is going to start uh, filling out, well, wants to apply for a, a pension. Right. She is one of the ones who I mentioned who was not able to sign her own name. She signed the paperwork with an X. And I have a hunch that there is a story that she was not telling. Uh, somewhere in there because uh, the language of these uh, documents is almost always very precise. Mm -hmm. They are legal documents right. and there are certain uh, phrases that you see in almost every application 
when it uh, the the wound was suffered in duty on the battle line in action against enemies of our country and it was very specific right. and very formal language when, uh, when when asked to provide evidence of her marriage she was able to do this but when it got to the point of asking about children her comment was no children living hmm. Which, you know, having read a number of these things, that suggests it, it stands that out a little they, bit. they've probably suffered some loss already yeah. uh, earlier on. So this is just going to be another uh, way where perhaps her American dream doesn't end as happily as we might wish. Mm -hmm. She will receive her pension, and she will continue to, to, um, to collect it until she passes away. Mm -hmm. And it all begins when... Uh, you know, someone calls out sick. Uh, Thomas was filling in, basically, as you mentioned, for one of the other mm -hmm. um, the, the other cooks there. So yeah. it, it, to your point about sometimes the randomness of it all. And, and since we're talking about the 61st um, Ohio, there's a, a, another casualty that is worth mentioning here. He's not buried here, but mm -hmm. it's a similar story. Uh, down at the George Spangler farm, there were a number of medical personnel. Right. You have the surgeons who are the ones who are going to uh, carry out the amputations and all that. They would have been called the operators. Right. But every regiment, in addition to having a surgeon, usually has an assistant surgeon. And the assistant surgeons are the ones that usually come from the hospital up to the front lines, make sure that the patients get into the ambulances, uh, do a bit of a triage up here to make the uh, care of the wounded more efficient down at the hospital. Exactly. The assistant surgeon of the 61st uh, Ohio is a gentleman by the name of William Moore. Mm -hmm. He's a 33-year-old uh, physician from the uh, area of Cincinnati, Ohio. He's married, has two very young children, and he is up here on the 3rd of July in the morning uh, trying to bring the wounded of the 61st Ohio back to probably the reverse slope of Cemetery Hill off in this direction right. where they can be put into ambulances and taken down to the farm. And critically, a, a sheltered area, a which sheltered is area. Where, where they would have been. Except not sheltered enough, uh, because a random artillery round happened mm -hmm. to explode, and it hit him in the thigh. It apparently did not break the bone, but it was a contusion that ripped out a chunk of flesh. It was mm. pretty intense. Um, he was taken to a, a small farmhouse, the farmhouse of uh, Catherine Gwynn, that would have been just on the southern side of the National Cemetery as you visit it today. And from there, he sent a message down to the Spangler Farm asking for the surgeon of the 61st, uh, please come up here and get me. Mm -hmm. Of course, the surgeon is very busy right now, and he right. can't make a break for it. And while um, he's looking for a few minutes to, to escape his duties at the farm and come and get his colleague, the bombardment for Pickett's Charge begins. Oh. And this a whole area was so filled with the flying iron, the, the surgeon decided it was not safe to do that. But as soon as the issue settles itself, the, the doctor will come up and find Assistant Surgeon Moore and take him back to the Spangler Farm. Nothing can be done for him, however, and on mm -hmm. the 6th of um, July, uh, Assistant Surgeon Moore will pass away. He will be, uh, his brothers-in-law will come and take his remains back to Ohio. Mm -hmm. But during the Centaur battle, only one surgeon or assistant surgeon in the Union Army will become a fatality here at Gettysburg. And it happened to be Assistant Surgeon Moore of the, uh, the 61st. Wow. Again, pointing out the arbitrary nature of death on these battlefields. Yep. It's not always in big charges in line of battle. It's sometimes it's that one random artillery shell that's going to end this man's life. So the 61st gives us two examples of just how fate uh, can act. The man who's been doing something good for his men, taking the the kettles carrying coffee back to uh, to the rear area and the surgeon assistant surgeon who was charged with taking care of the wounded of the same regiment.